Good day, everyone, and welcome to Alanfrica Talks 11. Today, we have a wonderful speaker, Lawrence, from Ghana NLP, who will be talking to us about NLP for Ghanaian languages. Lawrence is a Ghanaian with a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering and master's in modeling for science and engineering. He is currently working as director of products and a research scientist with Ghana NLP. Today, we will learn about Ghana NLP, the motivation, the scope of work, and the wonderful projects that they are involved in for the, the Ghana community. Thank you very much, Lawrence, and the floor is yours. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Sorry about the, uh, the early hic uh, hiccup. My name is Lawrence, Lawrence is GMP. Um, like Chris rightly mentioned, I'm from Ghana. By the way, thank you, Chris, for the opportunity for us to, to present our work here. And uh, we thank everyone for, for being here as well. So I'll just start, I'll just go in and then I will, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So briefly a bit about myself. Uh, I think Chris has already uh, done the introduction. So like you rightly said, I am Ghanaian. I started uh, my bachelor education in Ghana in aerospace engineering, then I I worked some time in the subsea industry as a subsea engineer, and then I moved to Spain uh, for my master's degree. And I did. I started doing a bit of research there with the Barcelona Super Computing Center as well. And uh, then I, after that, I moved back to France, but more in subsea engineering. Just had a hitch, a two-year hitch in there, and then now I um, moved back into research with uh, still in France, but with uh, Syria. And uh, so my main research is on uh, explainability of machine learning models. But then alongside as well, most of my work is also in uh, Ghana NLP. And uh, this is what we are going to talk about today. Okay, so just to start with some motivation and uh, just to introduce what we do, what we've been doing in Ghana NLP and at least what we will be pre presenting today in this, present, in this uh, talk. So I'll just make a few assumptions about the audience we have here and assume that most of us are at least familiar with NLP and the broad sense or in, in the details of it. So that's in uh, when we talk about NLP here, we are talking about the, you know, building systems or, or, or tools that can uh, understand text or speech and then uh, you know, perform some intelligent uh, task at the end of it. And so this is the assumption we'll work with. And uh, just to to go a bit in detail, at least, uh, or to specify, to go a bit uh, on the tangent that we want, which is directed towards African languages. And uh, here I will just start by talking about how important this tool or technology of uh, uh, natural language processing is, is for, for African languages, or even for Africa itself. So basically, it's uh, here. I'm just focusing on these four ones, but there are several, uh, several, uh, uh, how do I, several importance or essence of NLP in, in the African community. So we can say it's it's it can save lives, and we saw this as especially during the COVID nineteen pandemic and how several tools of NLP were used, or how we it helped us to understand the the disease itself. And in terms of deploying uh, several uh, solutions to several places, especially in Africa, NLP tools, several NLP tools were used in analyzing some data and present, presenting some of the, uh, the, the, the findings that people had. And uh, on top of it as well, if people build tools, especially directed in the medical sector, it's, uh, you know, it can help to, to bridge the gap between uh, uh, communities which probably cannot be rich with some some high resource language, I would say. And then this therefore helps a lot in uh, towards uh, uh, making a, several opportunities available for people, especially in terms of when we talk about uh, this, this period of artificial intelligence. And then also when we talk about the several uh, commissions of uh, civic education and NLP tools can be very useful in terms of how they reach 
several communities, how they make uh, information available, how they can quickly uh, spread information across different languages, even in the same country or whatever. So uh, there are several uh, uses or uh, importance that we can take out of this tool. So then to continue, I'll just talk a bit about the, the challenges or the difficulties we will see in terms of uh, uh, applying these tools. But here I'll focus more on the research part. When you are researching in artificial intelligence, some of the challenges we've come across. And so some of it, it's, uh, the main one would be lack of, uh, of data. As we know, most of these artificial intelligence uh, methods or algorithms are built solely on, uh, not solely, but heavily on, on data and not just data, but uh, good data as well. And this is something that is very difficult when it comes to uh, several uh, African languages to be a bit specific. And uh, because these we will tell them as, we will term them as low resource languages as, and it's difficult to find lots of good data about them, especially when it comes to, in terms of uh, even parallel corpora as well, that's even very difficult to find. And, uh, so this makes this presents one challenge when you are doing several you're doing research in natu in natural language processing on these languages, and also most of these uh, languages you, it may be hard to find them in use when it comes to specialized fields you know, in technology in, in medicine and uh, several other fields. So it's very difficult. It's and there's a bit of it presents a bit of challenge in there as well. And then there's a uh, uh, and when it comes to investment or funding in net for NLP in these uh, languages, it's uh, it's uh, it's. I think it's improving in these days, but it's still uh, difficult. Not you would not easily find that compared to to other uh, very popular languages. And uh, so these are some of the challenges that uh, you would face when we do research and. And uh, just to go a bit in detail as well, just to present a few uh, few examples. So here, what we're just talking about, it's like if you take uh, some of the tools which are available publicly as well, it's, I mean, this is actually, I think this image is a bit outdated. Some Google has done a lot, has improved a lot and added several languages, especially some Ghanaian languages, but I think there are still some, some languages that could uh, still show up here. And even for languages that are there, sometimes, you know, the quality can be a bit, uh, you know, tricky. You know, sometimes when you're even doing a back translation, sometimes you get different, uh, you know, you get different uh, meanings compared to what you would consider correct. So it's based on this, uh, this challenge, these challenges or these difficulties, this is, uh, this is, uh, the work of Ghana NLP was born out of this, the whole organization was born out of this. And then with that motivation said, I will just uh, zoom into my presentation. I'll present the organization Ghana NLP, who we are, what we do, how the organization is set up. Then I'll talk about some of the things we've done previously and some of the research areas we've been into, some of the products we've built as a result of the research that we've been, we've been working on and currently what we are mainly focused on in terms of of research or products that we are building and I would just conclude by uh, yeah finish with some resources and how you can you can get in touch with us. So Ghana NLP or it's also NLP Ghana uh, it's an open source organization of people who are interested in the field of NLP and uh, it was founded by uh, Paula Zumre and uh, Dr. Stephen Moore towards the end of 2019, just before the COVID pandemic started. So we've got several people joining and the main, all these people have the, the main, the, the same idea. And it's, it's built on, let's say top of, just to summarize on three main areas, you know, working on uh, building data sets for NLP tasks and then making them available as well, publicly available. And also going step further in, in uh, building some, uh, computational methods. So by this, I mean NLP uh, methods or NLP tasks as well on top of this. And uh, so basically, and that the idea is to create an army of uh, or a society of uh, researchers geared towards the field of NLP. And uh, we are trying to infiltrate, I always use that word, uh, several areas of the of, of Ghanaian life through 
uh, NLP. So here I say Ghana, but as I go along in the presentation, you realize that the, 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 the vision has kind of broadened a bit. So just to go a bit ahead as well. So we spend our time building uh, data, uh, generating data from several data uh, for several of the languages in Ghana. And now we've broadened a lot to some uh, some African languages as well. They started mainly focusing on Ghana, but actually these days we, based on some requests we have as well, we are working a lot with some other uh, uh, African languages. And we've we built a lot of uh, uh, models in terms of uh, translation models, speech recognition models. I'll talk a bit more about those details going ahead. And the idea is to build uh, in terms of as part of the, all these research, we build on top of it uh, several products that we make uh, available to the general public to be used as well. And so far, some of the sponsors we've been working with, uh, we've got Microsoft and Algorin. Algorin is the main, I would say, the sister uh, benefactor of, uh, of Ghana NLP. Most of our, the technology have been provided by uh, Algorin. And then we've got uh, uh, GAJ, who helps us in putting some of our works online. And then we've got the Harvard University Center for African uh, Studies as well. And then Google also gives us some support as well. So in terms of the organization, this is how we are set up. We're mainly in uh, the teams of engineering, communications, data, and research. And then uh, in research, we've got the supervised and unsupervised teams. And then we've got a team in charge of quality and evaluations as well. And uh, yeah, so it's purely open source and uh, we've got all, all the people who are working now are mainly uh, volunteering on that as well. So in the engineering team, what they are mainly focused on is uh, getting most of our, deploying most of our tools, uh, setting up uh, if we need uh, tools for uh, recording data, getting data, they, are, they, they assist with that as well and deploying uh, the, the products that we built. So what have been, our work is mainly grouped into these four areas, I would say. So this, uh, we spend a lot of time on data collection, so collecting text data, speech data as well, and uh, all the, the work that goes into preparing them or making them ready to be used for uh, the several NLP tags. And then we've, in the past, and even as we go, on, and in these days now, we, we've been building a lot of uh, word embeddings, uh, uh, named entity recognition tools and POS tools as well. And then a lot, and as you will see later in the presentation, a lot of our work has been focused on machine translation, neural ma machine translation and uh, speech recognition as well. And then we've, uh, one of the main products we've built as well is, uh, is an API, which I will show go, go, uh, uh, as part of the presentation. So uh, I'll just start by talking a bit about some of the previous work we did when we started, when the organization started, some of the works we were involved in. And uh, yeah, so we, we like I said, we spent a lot of time collecting data, uh, data for all, NL, all sort of NLP tasks. And here I'll just focus on one of them that we did. And before I go ahead, I'll just talk a bit about, uh, just to introduce the language landscape in Ghana. So we've got over seven, here I said 75, but in fact, it could be, uh, depending on how detailed you want to be, it could be over well over 80 languages in the small country of Ghana. And uh, more than half of the population are, are literate in English or, or any of the local languages. And uh, as you can see in the chart here, there's, there's a, a few of them. Here I show some of the very main languages. Uh, that are spoken in Ghana, and you can see like I can stand out as the one that is uh, at least either spoken or, or understood by a larger percentage of the population. So when we started the organization, organization this was the automatic uh, direction for us to make quick, uh, quick, uh, quick, what's the word, quick progress. Uh, so we started a lot of our tools on uh, 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 on the, on the Akan language. And so this, this part that I, I will talk about is some of the, one of the, the tasks we did, which was collecting uh, text data for, for the Akan language. 
So we, we did it in, the, in uh, several sections. So we started with uh, collecting uh, data on social media, basically uh, this we call the crowdsource data. So we had, uh, we used the, this was before the time of, uh, uh, what was it called? Before the time of Docano and, and all these tools which make speech uh, uh, data collection easier. So we just used the Google, uh, uh, Google Forms to to solicit data. So we've got about uh, close to 700 uh, random sentences in the uh, tree and English. So both it was a parallel corpora. And uh, so this was then verified, corrected. And so this we call it more or less a golden uh, data set. So it could be used for several, uh, you know, text uh, as a test set. Then uh, we on top of this, the aim was to uh, translate 50,000 random, uh, uh, like a pairs of uh, uh, sentences as well. And so this one here, by then we had built some of our translation tools. So we use that to, to generate like a fast baseline. And uh, with this, we had some of our researchers uh, go through it and then recorrect what had been done by the, what had been produced by the, the translation model. And then, yeah. So here, for instance, you get something like a source test. Let's say you've got, I've gotten better. The, the, the translation model would produce that and then would have someone go through it and correct it. So this was actually quite good because eventually we used that to retrain most of our models and it was very beneficial. And this is just the, 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 the end result. Eventually we're aiming for 50,000, but we managed uh, just half of it, which was still very useful as well. And uh, so this was on the part of data collection, but even on top of that, we've uh, so far we've gone ahead. If I just show back the slide again, we've gone ahead to 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 uh, collect data or get data for Airware, Dagbani, and Ga as well. So several other languages here, and in addition to some other uh, non ghanaian or African languages. So one of the earlier works we did as well was uh, word embeddings. So when we started, we we're trying to we had uh, the 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 JW three hundred data set that we were we we're starting to work on. So one of the works we did on it was uh, generating word embeddings or trying to understand. Uh, so anyway, just to start, just to give some context when we talk about word embeddings, basically we are talking about how to take. Uh, data in terms of text and how to make it take it into a form that a computer can work on. So, uh, from a text to uh, let's say a numerical representation. And what's good about doing this is when you've you've gotten it in this form, it's 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 actually it ends up in a space where you can actually uh, it it aside it capturing the 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 meaning or the 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 semantics and then the syntax as well, you're able to kind of do some uh, uh, numerical operations on it. So for instance, like what I'm showing here, if uh, if you take it after generating word embeddings, if they are good enough, if you take a word like Ken and you subtract the vector of man from it and you add the vector of woman to it, you should be getting something close to Quinn. So this is very interesting when it comes to word embeddings. And this is in a form that can be easily and which is actually still used, which is used by a lot of the machine learning models for NLP as well. So we started with this, this, and uh, what we did was, uh, it was still a form of neural uh, uh, language modeling, but it was more static, this part of it. And what was interesting was it helped us to understand the data and it was really interesting what came out of it. So if I go forward quickly, this was how it, we, we tried to visualize it. So there's a very in, in, interesting tool by TensorFlow. It's still actually available. So for other researchers, if, and it's not just for NLP, but if you've got any high dimensional data and you want to visualize it, it's a very interesting tool that, that you can use. And then it gives, it computes the distance between uh, some of your, your data points as well. And uh, yeah, so here we, we, we used it on the, on the tree language. And for instance, if you take uh, just to go for it, this is how it ends up. Basically, this is how the tool is. You know, you can visualize them in two D or three D through either PCA or TSNE as well. And then, so for instance, if you take a word like doctor, which means doctor, 
and uh, as you can see on the on the right side here, it, it gives you some of the very uh, closest words in the in then that vector space, and uh, which is actually very interesting to see that it's talking about. It has words like uh, someone who works on drugs, uh, some a healer. It's talking about students. So it gives all this. Uh, you're able to visualize the data set in uh, in uh, how do I say in, uh, in this sort of space. I would say. So we did this so this work, and this was also for mother. So if you take a word like mother, it's closer to to words like parent or friend or father or husband. You know, so it's it shows that the relative different uh, distances between these words and that uh, target word as well. And so these were some other words we began with, and but the the thing with this sort of representation it is quite static so it just produces it for one word the distance is computed for one word basically so if there's i mean the one version of the word but then sometimes there's a possibility that you know the same word could mean different things like in the example given here like you know the word cell means two different things depending but this is easy for us humans to capture based on the context so we we went a step further and then we analyzed it or we we, we worked on developing uh, like contextual versions of the uh, of the language models and we took advantage of uh, of 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 bert or what we call by bidirectional encoder representations for transformers so transformers was was big back then and we we relied heavily on it and uh, here so we we took advantage of the idea of transfer learning as well so not training from scratch we did train some language models from scratch but this version that we show here was mainly um, uh, mainly fine-tuning a, a bird model on the on the can language and uh, we went ahead to do it for several other languages as well so it, this was really interesting because after i was doing this it was easier to do to to do several other uh, downstream tasks like uh, uh, sentiment analysis or named entity recognition or POS tagging and all that, you know, in a, a local language, in a, a language, in a, let's say, in any, any language at all, basically, which captures the, the context uh, as well. So, and most of these tools that we did, we've made them available. So, for instance, uh, there's a notebook on the, the link that I show here which shows how to use the some of the models that we built which have been open sourced on Hagen face how to use it for sentiment analysis task and here was more for uh, sentence prediction and it was yeah, filling uh, a task as well and uh, yeah so most of these have been made available some of most of the the tools that we built have been made available and here most of the works that we did as well we we, we spent some time to to make them available through re, in the form of research papers or research articles. So here, if you follow these links, you should be able to, or even if you search for Garden LP on archive, you'll be able to see these works where we work, uh, where we present what we did on uh, the word embeddings. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll make sure that the links are available for you. And then when we the, when we open source the uh, the the, the the data sets that we collected as well. And so this was what we did, some of what we did in the, just when we started, but on top of these research that we did, we've, uh, we've, uh, we went on to build some products. So here I'll start to talk about some of the products that we've, we've built, or we could actually say use cases. So, so one of the, or what I would call the flagship, uh, product is the, uh, our translator application, which is called Kaya. So just to give a quick uh, explanation, so Kaya was it's taken after the the, the Kaya African mahogany tree, which symbolizes uh, its, uh, life, uh, uh, symbolizes life in 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 some African languages, and actually means also home in some uh, Southern African languages as well. So this was. The, let's say the vision behind the application sort of being uh, providing uh, a starter for for future future tech we would say in the NLP space <laughs> and uh, so it's a yeah it's a transformer uh, model maybe let's say 
uh, it's based on a transformer model. And uh, so when we started, we focused a lot of most of the languages that we released on the translation, the text translation side were Tree, Elway, Ga, these are Ghanaian languages. And then we actually uh, incorporated Yoruba as well and uh, from, from Nigeria. And uh, so what was interesting about Kaya as well was we, we made, uh, we provided the possibility for a user to, to rate a translation that we, we gave and also to provide a, like an alternative translation if they found that it wasn't right. So that then basically we just took the feedback people gave us and then we were able to go back into it and then you know, uh, review it, correct it, and then put it back, put it as part of our, our, our training data and use it again. And uh, so this, the first, this is, and then afterwards there was another iteration where we added several other languages. So we added some more Ghanaian languages and then uh, some other African languages as well. And it was actually, it's actually quite impressive. Back then we were able to improve more than what Google was presenting for, for Google Translator was presenting for Yoruba. And uh, these were the first versions, you know, it was actually interesting to have these things online. It was the first time we were able to, to, to have these tools for a Ghanaian language, which for us was actually quite satisfying. And uh, so we, we went a step further and we did speech recognition. We included the features for speech recognition as well. So for, for I think we have it for Yoruba as well and we have it for, uh, for other Ghanaian languages as well. And uh, so it is available on the Google Play Store and the iOS Store as well. And this is the interface. This is just a quick, uh, a quick, a quick, of, a quick view of how it looks. So we also have a, a version in the web, uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the web, and it's a bit different now from this. But uh, yeah, it's something still similar. And it was actually interesting how we did it. You know, we just did a quick version of it, uh, deployed it on Streamlit, and it's it's. If you follow this link, you should be able to. To, to play with it or interact with it, then uh, you can download it from any of the, the, the application stores as well. And so I think this is, yeah. This, so here was one where I just wanted to show this for when we were setting up the, uh, the uh, speech recognition system. So here we're playing with it on the, on the web. It, and so this was when you, here we allowed for you to, to upload a file and then uh, the test, the speech rec it was the speech recognition algorithm was run and then would return the uh, the the, re the transcription to you. On the mobile app, you can just you know interact with it. Uh, actually, I think there's a video, and this one yeah, this shows uh, the one of the founders playing with it. Uh, so yeah, you could speak on it, and then I will not show the I will not show the full tutorial, but then. If you go on our YouTube channel as well, we show it, you know, how to use it and some best practices to get uh, good recognition. And uh, this was just a quick uh, 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 review of it. And so that's, that's more about the, the translation and that speech recognition tool, uh, which has been, you know, deployed as part of our, our, our application. So our next thing we did was to make to build a sort of a web API to make it easy for businesses or people who wanted to do translations in, in bulk to, to access it, for developers to access it as well. So now it's, this is, if you go on the, on the following link, you should be able to get access to, to sign up, to use the, currently we have the text translation, which is available. We should soon be able to launch the uh, uh, speech recognition uh, API as well. And then what we are working on is the text to speech API, which will be will make available as well. But the text translation is cu is currently live. We have a developer version as well in case you want to play with it. You know, a free version that you can you can uh, use. And I think there's a link if you have any challenges. There's a link on the if you follow this uh, this this URL. It's a link uh, or uh, an an address that you can write to if you have any difficulties in accessing the API. And so in terms of works or ongoing research that we are currently involved in, uh, so as I mentioned, there's the speech to speech to text. 
Uh, no, we've we've been work we've already worked on speech to text. So text to speech is something we are currently working on as well. Uh, so this was just I don't know if you got the the gist of it or just show it here, but. Yeah. So th this is still very early. So we, we built heavily on uh, the research from uh, Masakani. They've released uh, with, uh, I think it was, I forgot the name of the other organization they worked with. I think it was Koki. And they, they released some resources on uh, text-to-speech. And we were just trying to prototype it quickly for some, some of the, the Ghanaian languages. And I think it's working very well. So this research is still ongoing. And uh, eventually, we should be able to release it as part of the Kaya app and also to as part of the API as well. So one of the other works we are doing is a currently is currently ongoing a project with uh, the Center for African Studies in Harvard. We are helping them build some data sets and also some baseline uh, models, also translation models. So for we've already done it for Kikuyu, and there are several other African languages, how's Aibo, Swahili, several other languages that. Uh, uh, our team is working on so it's, it's a huge part of it is data collection building tools to assist in data collection text and both and speech as well and then afterwards we build some uh, like we said baseline models as well based on the tools that we've already uh, we've already experimented with so it's quicker to to go ahead with them now another uh, project we are working on is Call is an early reading uh, project, so it's called Tunasoma, and the the main idea here is uh, basically as part of is teaching kids to read early, but then it's it's kind of incorporated as part of the uh, the uh, daily uh, interactions with helpers or with uh, assistants. So uh, it's interesting. You flash words that the, the kid is you know that the kid is supposed to know, and here it's we're trying to take advantage of what we've already built in uh, you know in terms of our translation and then our speech recognition to implement it in uh, in uh, local languages as well to help with the uh, kids to 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 pick up reading early or to teach them to read early even at the ages of two or three it seems like it's an interesting uh, methodology for teaching uh, children to read and uh, so it's one of the researches that's ongoing as well and uh, yeah, so that these are the main uh, researches we're working on in terms of how we fund ourselves. So there's a lot of, uh, as you see, when you go on the Kaya app, uh, we you can there's a paid version of it, and we use some of these funds to fund the research. And also, like I mentioned, we are when we started, we had huge. Uh, compute from Microsoft and this was what we used a lot in in uh, in in training most of the models at the early stage and then Google also uh, assisted us they give us some forms sometimes and then they, they give us some funds in terms of gifts and then there's the work that we do with the, 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 with the Harvard University also and uh, yeah so this is how at least we found the research and through the API as well. So this is just uh, some of the packages we offer in the API. So like I said, there's a developer version, free version if you just want to play with it. And if you have any issues, you can just write to subscriptions at algorithm.com and then they will have uh, someone answer to you or help you to subscribe as well. And then for businesses also. So we are in talks with, I didn't present that here because it's too early. We are in talks with uh, uh, an agricultural company and to which provides uh, help the yeah, an agriculture company and we are trying to 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 build some some tools for them as well so yeah in terms of uh, next steps for us so our aim is to include more languages across africa like i said we've already expanded into sub several southern languages and then yeah so keep listening also to feedback we appreciate a lot of feedback from people when they use it and they see some interesting or wrong uh, not so correct translations or recognitions they come back to us and then we we try to work on them and then basically just 
uh, yeah, work on it, clean it up, and bring it back up. So just before I end, so one of the founders, he's most of the tools that I, I talked about here, most in terms of if you want to build your own uh, 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 bird models, translation models for any African language, whatever, he's put most of the tools in a book uh, that's available. It's called Transfer Learning for Natural Language Processing. And so he can it uses tools such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, uh, Fast, API, Fast AI. And importantly, Hagen Phase as well. Most of, our, like we said, most of our tools are uh, open sourced on Hagen Phase. So most of these tools are implemented in this book. If you want to use any of these, they are available in this book, so you can check it out. And uh, yeah, and these are just a few of them of the resources. I think I should have, I could have actually put more here, but these are just a few of some of the blog posts that we released, our GitHub repo as well, which has some of several notebooks that one could use. And then uh, here I was showing the the, the dynamic version, uh, the dynamic version, uh, the visualization I was talking about for for the tree embeddings. It's on this link. It's still actually up now, so you can still go there and play with it. And uh, we'll find a way. I'll see with Chris how we can share these links with you at the end. So yeah, thank you. You can follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, on. Uh, on our on our website as well. She's, I didn't present that here, but it's yeah, it's scanlp.org. You should be able to find us there. And uh, we'll be very happy if you want to join us to contribute. And one thing I maybe I didn't hammer a lot in it is there's a lot of room for people to learn as well. You know, to to play with the uh, you know uh, working on Microsoft Azure these models. You know, people are very open to guiding you if it's your first time. And uh, yeah, you can write us if you want to reach out to us, please uh, write to the email address natural.language.processing.gh at gmail and we'll be very happy to, to get in touch with you. And yeah, so thank you very much. And at here at link tree, link, this link tree uh, link or URL, you should be able to have access to all the, uh, uh, all our channels also for the applications and the API as well. Thank you very much. And that will be the end. Okay, so we've come to the end of this wonderful talk. Thank you so much, Lawrence, for sharing with us some of the wonderful projects and use cases that Scan NLP and you have been involved in. Thank you very much to the audience for this talk. Um, very honored to have you here, Lawrence, and um, see you all next week for another interesting talk. And bye.